I'm Larry Walther. This is principlesofaccounting.com, chapter 13. And in this module, we will continue our consideration of long-term notes and present value concepts, specifically looking at level payment loans. This is very much an extension of the previous video where we talked about uh, present value and future value considerations. And so what I ask you to think about now is a typical loan that involves level periodic payments that cover both principal and interest, of the nature of that. That is a stream of payments. Each payment is the same over the life of the loan, and at the end of the loan, the, the loan is paid off. So we have an annuity. And, in point of fact, the present value of those payments is equal to the loan amount. And so we can look at a formula, rather than saying the present value equal payments times an annuity present value factor, we can say that the loan amount or the payments times the annuity present value factor. And we're now beginning to understand how we can calculate loan payments. For example, if we borrow $100,000 on a five-year loan with five annual payments and the interest rate is 6%, and we say to ourselves, well, what should our payment be each year so that at the end of the fifth year this thing is paid off? It's a $100,000 loan equals the amount of the payment times the present value of that stream of payments. And I went to the book and gathered the present value factor 4.212. That's the present value of a five-year annuity using a 6% interest rate. You might want to stop the video for a moment and verify that. But in any event, that's what we have. And when we solve for the unknown payment, that is, we'll find that the payment is 23739 23739 times 4.21 equals the $100,000 amount. So very simply, we've calculated that mystical amount of how much is the payment on this loan. So here I have the loan amortization table. I start out at the beginning of year one with the $100,000 loan. It's a 6% loan, so for the first year, $6,000 of interest accumulates. When I make my $23,739 payment that we calculated a moment ago, the first $6,000 goes toward interest, and the other $17,739 serves as a reduction of principal so that the $100,000 principal is reduced to $82,260, which is the beginning balance for the next year. And that $82,260 earns interest at 6% or $4,935 for the second year as compared to the total payment gives me a principal reduction in the second year of $18,000. 804 and leaving me a, a remaining balance of 63,000. And so it would go for each of the next years. Notice that the last payment in the last year will satisfy the interest of 1343 and 22,395 principal reduction, leaving us a zero balance due at maturity. So it's pretty nifty mathematics here. But when we reduce this to journal entries, they become fairly simple. We borrowed $100,000, we debit cash, and we credit notes payable. The first year we make a $23,000 payment, $6,000 being applied to interest expense and the difference being applied to reduce the note. The next year we've got less interest of the $23,000 payment, only $4,900 is interest and the difference is principal reduction. And this process would continue each year and I'll, I'll just jump to the last year here and note that the last payment of $23,000 satisfies the accrued interest of $13,43 and reduces the balance by the $22,395 which wipes it out and says we're done and it's paid off. So let's close with a few additional comments. In thinking about annuities, recognize that some scenarios may involve beginning of period payments, others may involve end of period payments. Uh, in the supplements in the textbook there are alternative uh, alternative present value and future value tables reflecting these alternative timing patterns for payments. And more is said about this in chapter 24. Uh, for now we won't dwell on that any further. But also consider that some payments may occur on other than an annual basis. We might have monthly or quarterly payments. So if for example we have a $10,000 8% per annum or annual interest rate loan involving quarterly payments over two years, what we really have is an annuity that involves eight periods, that is eight quarters, four quarters per year for two years. So we've got eight periods and the interest rate per period is really two percent, one-fourth of the annual amount. And so the present value factor would be 7.325, that's eight periods at two percent per period. So we can modify our, uh, our calculations based on the number of periods and the interest rate per period. It doesn't have to be tied to annual amounts.